In today's episode. If I don't get help, you don't get help either. Elderly man decides that it's not the correct medication if not branded and expensive. Be careful what you demand. So let's get started. If I don't get help, you don't get help either. Many, many years ago, I worked at a large movie theater at a mall as an assistant manager. We were always busy and had full staffing levels on the weekends, but to make up for the payroll costs, off-peak days and hours were staffed extremely low, one staff member per area usually. We always received our inventory shipments on a weekday and in the morning slash early afternoon, but they were always such large shipments that my general manager, a sensible fellow, would usually have an extra staff member or two scheduled to help put the massive amounts of candy, popcorn bags slash tubs, drink cups, 35 pounds bags of popcorn kernels, cleaning supplies and what not away. Even with help this could take a few hours, there would always be at least four or five massive pallets delivered. Well, on one usual inventory day, there was a slight problem. The week before, my GM went on vacation and the assistant GM, a total asshat, made the schedule. Ever the stingy jerk, he decided it was not worth a few extra payroll hours to schedule any extra people on that day to help out with shipment. Furthermore, on that day he had scheduled himself, and I as the two managers on duty during that shift, and since he was above such petty things as actually doing any work at all other than sitting in the office reading sports scores on the computer, it was up to me to get the entire order put away, cover breaks for each lone staff member working in box slash concession slash usher, and deal with any customer complaints and issues should any arise. I was, well, still am, a very small, lightweight female, lifting a couple thousand pounds of boxes and bags in a short time period while also tasked with the aforementioned responsibilities completely solo just didn't seem logical to me. So I made my way back to the office where Assistant General Jerkface McShitwad was reading golf scores or something. I said hey, I could really use some help putting the order away. I can't get this all done before the end of my shift. The asshat scoffed, gives me a sarcastic ass smile, and goes I think you can handle it by yourself. I say well I would really appreciate you covering the breaks for the staff while I work on this then. I really can't do all of this by myself before the end of the shift. Again, the asshat gives me that shit-eating grin and goes well, if I were working alone, I know I would be able to do it all by myself, so you should be able to as well. Figure it out. Fine. F asterisk CKU. So I go back out there and just start hauling a asterisk guest to get things put away. In fact, I am furious and when I am furious, I can be a little careless. I'm about halfway through the initial third of the quarter of the tenth of the first large pallet of bullsh asterisk T, I am tasked with handling sign auxilio, when I realize something that infuriated me even more. Asshat assistant GM was supposed to be the person who prepped the area we stored candy in the day before. What this means in theory is that the person responsible for that goes into the candy storage area, rotates all the stock from the last week to the front left side of the shelves, so we can stock the new stuff towards the back right, so we don't overlook a case of cookie dough bites and then it goes bad and murders all our customers and we get sued. Or something like that. Anyway, since the asshat did not do this, I now not only have to put this shit away myself, I am now also responsible for rotating the existing boxes on the shelves in a neat stack on the left before I can even think about unloading this pile of overpriced diabetes chow. So now I am just a whirlwind of candy shuffling fury. As fast and carelessly as possible I am just punching boxes into their rightful positions without any regard to their delicate innards. I don't know if M&MS can bruise, but some of them probably did that day. My rage was actually helping me out quite a bit, until I got to the Twizzlers. For you lucky souls that have never stocked boxes of bulk candy before, most of them are reasonably sized at about 5 to 10 pounds a box, so while there are a lot of them, they are reasonably manageable. This is not the case with Twizzlers. Our Twizzler packages were full-sized, and there are about 60 of them in a box. Shit, I could easily move into one of these boxes and have a friend of similar proportions over for company. Twizzlers are also the preferred overpriced movie snack for recently divorced middle-aged white women on their first jump and back into the dating pool for some reason, so suffice it to say we sold a lot of them. 
I've got about 6 of these boxes already on the shelf all the way to the right with another 6 I need to unload and none of them are where they should be so this is where I lost it completely. I shove my arm in to grab the first of the massive box of twisty sugar ropes that is on the right side that needs to be on the left side and quickly and completely rip open slash off a good sized chunk of my arm near the elbow on the metal shelf bracket. Well I was told before that bleeding profusely on the boxes was generally frowned upon, so I make my way back to the office to interrupt Ashat McGolf scores and show him my ouchy arm. Despite his failings in literally every other area in his life, he does realize that workplace injuries should be taken seriously because potential lawsuits and money and liability and whatnot, and immediately located a clinic that we had some sort of professional dealings with that would check out my arm and give me a tetanus shot and all that jazz at no cost to myself. I was pretty hysterical at this point, although not, as he thought, over my injury, and he assumed I was upset about having to lose hours, I was hourly, you see, and assured me that I would receive pay for the full day of work. So I got to go to the clinic, get patched up and my tetanus shot, and be home about three hours prior to the end of my shift while I had the knowledge that the asshat now had to go rotate the stock, get the order put away, cover breaks, and handle people complaining that Saw 3 wasn't the intellectual cinematic masterpiece that they thought it would be, and could they pretty please get their money back even though they watched the whole thing please it just was really gory, and they weren't. Expecting that okay what's the number for corporate then? while I got to sit at home receiving full pay for the rest of that day. Worth the scar, IMO. Elderly man decides that it's not the correct medication if not branded and expensive. I work as a receptionist for a pretty popular doctor in my area, so I have my fair share of stories to tell of entitled and or stupid people, but this by far is only one I've complied maliciously for because I generally have a not my business, I'm just doing my job. The doctor I work for recently got injured and has been unable to work, so I work on a system with pharmacies and health insurance companies where me and the clinic nurse make and stamp any prescriptions and referrals to specialists, and they tend to the patient's needs while we get the paperwork signed by the doctor from his home. This particular patient has always been difficult since I started working. He always seems like a nice old man then he starts yelling about how he knows better than everyone else. On this day, the patient came in to pick up a prescription for his monthly medication instead of letting us send it to a pharmacy for him to pick up there and was all smiles until he read the paper. Gasp, the nurse had used a generic name for a medication instead of the branded one that he liked. He then began insisting that the brand meds and the generic meds were not the same and that the generic medication was harmful because it was cheaper. I of course insisted that it was the same medication and explained to him how patents and medication branding worked, but he refused to listen. The nurse then stepped in and tried to explain with her nursing degree and 10 years of experience under her belt that even the specialist who initially prescribed it to him had put the generic in his file. Once again he refused to listen and raised his voice at the experienced nurse that he knew better. In his exact words, I'm not taking any f asterisk 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 medication if it's generic. I smiled and knowing that pharmacies no longer stock most branded medications for non-cash payment clients due to it being easier to approve generic medications on our country's free healthcare system and private insurances I told the nurse to just reprint it with the branded name because he's a grown adult that knows the consequences of not taking his medication. 15 minutes later, I get a call from a pharmacy we work with a lot, with the PhD holding pharmacist telling me that one of the patients from our clinic yelled at her that she didn't know anything about medicine because they couldn't give him his branded medication. She told me that he said he wasn't going to take it and left. I thought that would be the end of it and that he'd learn his lesson after visiting 7 plus pharmacies to no avail. But no. Guess who walked into the clinic this morning holding a report from the ER and requesting a referral letter for the national health insurance to cover his trip to the same specialist from before, only now his condition was irreparable and extremely uncomfortable. Sure I feel bad but stupid always loses. Be careful what you demand. Obligatory disclaimers. English is my first language and I am not on mobile, so let the corrections fly. Not my story but my son-in-laws and daughters, really, but it finally hit me that this probably fits this sub.
My oldest daughter met her now husband shortly after they both graduated high school through her sister's daughter number two boyfriend at that time. Both are pretty shy, but they hit it off immediately, lots of common interests, and just plain old chemistry. This would have been around 2013 or so. A couple of years later, both were going to community college and the classes were closer to our house, so we talked to SIL and asked him if he would be interested in sharing rides, to which the answer was yes because that would save him and his parents lots of money, time and effort, but he was having issues trying to figure out logistics, getting to our house on time, given his parents' work schedules, etc. We eventually asked him if he just wanted to move in with us, to make life easier, daughter's idea. His parents were not big on the idea at all, pretty religious and not big on premarital anything, but we assured them that he would not be sharing a room with her. Fast forward a few months and they somehow figure out that they were not, in fact, in separate bedrooms, but rather sharing a bed, must have come to pick him up for a visit or something and saw the arrangements. Now we did not just tell them one thing and turn around and do something else. The relationship developed and eventually, it was just time and space saving to have them share a room. Plus, our family is not religious and has no problems with what two people in love do, as long as they do things correctly, which they did, i.e. protection. His parents were not happy. At all. And they let him know it too, not us, him. His father, very active in their church as an elder or so, basically told him that he didn't appreciate his son disrespecting another man, me, by sleeping with his daughter before marriage in his house. They insisted that he move back in with them, no matter how inconvenient it might be to everyone with regard to classes. He asked them if he could finish out the week and go back home with them on the weekend. They reluctantly agreed, since that actually made sense for everyone's schedule, reason, for once. By the end of the week? They had eloped. And his parents were even more unhappy at that point. But, there was pretty much nothing they could do. SIL and daughter had addressed their issue. To top things off, yes, people make mistakes in life, but the main complainant was his dad. As I said, he was very active in the church, but we didn't find out until later that he actually has a son from an affair years earlier. So yeah. Thanks for watching.